Hello. So we're going to talk about symmetric groups today. So uh, we've seen last time that you have this representation of the symmetric group permuting the coordinate axis of Rn, and that's an interesting problem is to look at the uh, the trace of permutation matrices in that representation because the trace is a number of fixed points and you have interesting combinatorics there. So this is a, a problem in the representation theory of uh, the symmetric group, which is very interesting it's a kind of introduction to a uh, the representation theory of, uh, of SN and of finite groups in, uh, in general. So let's find this, uh, this presentation. So, symmetric groups and Poisson laws. So already, I'm already telling you the answer here. So we'll get to, to Poisson laws. That's going to be very, uh, very interesting. So let's have this started with some generalities. So, if you take a finite group, a representation of it uh, is a morphism to the unitary, uh, to a unitary group. Okay, I mean any group element should act uh, as a unitary matrix. The character of this representation is just the trace applied to, uh, to group elements with that matrices. And of course, uh, any finite group can have many representations. And uh, if it comes with an embedding into U n, you know, faithful representation that comes with it. Uh, we we'll call this the, the fundamental representation somehow, this embedding, and Kai will call it the main character of the group. Now, uh, some remarks about this character. So, uh, first of all, since trace AB is trace BA, the characters are central functions on GH and HG, and they give you the same thing. Uh, and actually, we'll see later, but this is a bit complicated. You know, any central function actually on a finite group is a linear combination of characters. That's a good reason for computing characters, for instance. Also, this was about finite groups. We can talk about this for uh, uh, for compact groups in general. And there, you just have to take care for the representation to be continuous. And uh, well, we'll talk about this later on. Second, characters are very interesting for uh, for compact groups too. Now, what to do with these characters? And the problem is that we want to compute the law of the character. That's the main problem. In other words, we want to compute the probabilities for chi to be an arbitrary number in the range. A priori, that's a complex number, okay? So these are probabilities in zero, one, and uh, well, I actually want to compute the measure encoding this thing. So uh, you see, it's a discrete measure, Dirac minus at k, and then the, the probability here. Of course, the sum is fine. So there are many, many motivations for this question. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll come back to this a bit later in uh, for the lectures, it's it, basically it's a representation theory. So uh, for those maybe who know uh, a bit in advance, but we'll get back to this later with details. What you want to do is to split the tensor powers of pi k by pi Peter while, and uh, so that's why I have to compute the, the moments of the character. So these are the moments of this uh, this measure here. That's why it's interesting for those even more advanced. That's uh, this measure is a still just transform of the Poincare series of the Tanakian category formed by the fixed points of U tensor K. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get into this later, but uh, the idea is that sometimes you just have to trust people. So uh, what I'm telling you is that if you if you do a lot of advanced representation theory and then do that later, the conclusion will be simple and then the main problem to be solved will be to compute the law of this character. So let's just compute it in advance, see what we get. And we'll see later uh, more motivations. So let's go to the symmetric group now. So uh, remember, uh, you can view it as permutation group permuting the coordinate axis of Rn. Now, what's the character? So these are zero one matrices, right? The permutation matrices. So you're looking at the number of ones on the diagonal, but the ones are exactly the correspond to die positions where chi of i is i, right? So this is the number of fixed points. So, uh, it's, it's supported by n. I mean, uh, the, the value of the character is n, right? Uh, the positive integers. So I have to compute a discrete probability measure supported by n. Now, even if you don't know the, advanced, the answer in advance, what can it be? Like Bernoulli plus one, things like this. There are not so many measures like that. So let's get into this now. So first of all, uh, let's try to compute the probability for the character to be zero. This means the permutation to have no fixed points, which is so-called the derangement. I mean, the guys there and guys that you permute, all of them are deranged. No one keeps. 
uh, its position. So that's one over e, and then goes to infinity limit. Very interesting result. So to prove it with the inclusion exclusion principle, so you take all these sets, F1, so that's your symmetric group SN. F1 is the set fixing one, F2 is the set of permutation fixing two, and so on up to Fn. So you want to compute the complement of this thing, and the formula is the following. So you take all the permutations, factorial n, then you remove all these sets, okay? That's why it's written here. But then if you remove all of them, the, the intersections, you remove them twice. So you have to add back the intersections. So you have to sum here. Now if you look at the intersection of three sets, actually you remove them three times, so then twice, so you have to remove them once again. And so on, so it's an alternative sum. That's the so-called inclusion-exclusion principle. Now if you look at cardinalities, so, uh, well, it's divided by factorial n. That's the, the number. Now if you want the probability, you have to divide by factorial n. We get one. Now here, what do we get? So each fi is a permutation of n minus one things which are left. So n minus one factorials, factorial times n, because there are n sets, makes it n factorial over n factorial, it's one, two. And then here, and so on, I mean, you get this, uh, these factorials here, and that's the series of one over e. So that's your conclusion. When n goes to infinity, it's one over e. Very, very interesting result. Now, in general, well, we, uh, we can slightly modify the computation and we get that uh, the probability for a uh, permutation to have exactly k fixed points is 1 over e times 1 over k factorial. Let's go back here. It's the same thing as before. We just have to modify all this uh, a bit. And now, so have the measure. That's, uh, that's the density of the measure. So let's take the, the theorem. So the character is the fixed points and it follows this law. Just the post follow right? So then goes to infinity. So very interesting. Now let's go a bit into these Poisson laws. So uh, what are these properties and all that, the properties of them? So first of all, there are uh, many of them. There is one for each t positive. That's the formula of P1, what we got. More generally for any t, we have a Poisson law like this. So that's just the formula exponential of t uh, with some direct masses added here. Why these uh, measurements are important? Uh, I mean, all of them, because they form a convolution semigroup, convolution semigroup, okay? So that, that's somehow interesting. So how to prove this? So what I'm claiming here is that if you take PS, P, P, T, even by, let's go back to this formula here, make the convolution, or well, compute here is the binomial formula, you get PS plus T. So that's a convolution semigroup. It's, there's some dynamics there going on. That's why they're interesting. Now, what else can be said? Well, these Poisson laws are very interesting. They appear a bit everywhere in the discrete world. It's a bit like the normal laws in, uh, in the continuous case. So uh, the reason for that is the Poisson limit theorem. So let's try to understand that too. So for that, we need the Fourier transform. So if you compute the Fourier transform, you see that's the formula of Dirac masses. I'm using here the Fourier transform, not any kind of uh, normalization or minuses or just the plain thing. Uh, expectation uh, of exponential of i times the variable. Then uh, we we'll get this, and then you get an exponential here. So that's your formula. Okay, when t is one, exponential of t i x minus one, and then uh, it's multiplied by t. Actually, that's quite nice because uh, you see, if you take the logarithm, that's linear in t. So logarithm linear in t means exactly that you have this uh, convolution semi property. We get another proof of this because log Fourier uh, linearizes the convolution. But now let's get to the Poisson limit. So if you take a Bernoulli thing like this, convolve it to it 10 times and goes to infinity, it converges to the Poisson of parameter t. So uh, how to prove this? Well, it's enough to take the Fourier transforms here and here. Here we already have it. That's it of Poisson of t. So to compute the Fourier transform of this and then it goes to infinity to, to get uh, the Fourier transform of this. So here's your computation. Uh, your Fourier transform this thing here first, the Bernoulli. Then take power n. So you write it like this. And now use the fact that uh, basically one plus one over n to the n goes to e. Okay, so you get an exponential and that's exactly the Fourier transform of t. Let's go back, yeah, that's it. So that's the Poisson limit theorem. 
So here's the conclusion to all this. Yeah, these Poisson laws really come in a family of the parameter T, first because they form a convolution semigroup, and also because of the Poisson limit theorem. It's stated like, uh, like this. So now as a question, uh, well, can we get this Poisson law of parameter T in the representation theory context of the groups? And the answer is yes. So, uh, but we have to truncate, you see, you see when, when T is between zero and one, PT appears as a kind of truncation of plan, right? With respect to convolution, let's say. So here for groups, we have to do the same thing, to uh, truncate the character. And that can be done in general, given any representation, and the number t is 0, 1. So it only can go uh, from 0 to 1. t be greater than 1, we don't know how to do it. Uh, we just truncate the characters. So you take the trace of, uh, of your matrix and then truncate that t. I mean, you take indices, diagonal entries from 1 to integer part of tn, right? It's very truncated that t. And well, if you do the computation now, it's exactly the same as before inclusion, inclusion, everything. Uh, you get Poisson of t. So first of all, let's see what this character is for the symmetric group. So remember, uh, on the diagonal, I have zeros or ones. Zero uh, if it's not a fixed point, and one if it's a fixed point. And if you truncate the diagonal, you're also looking at fixed points, but not in the set one n, but just in this set one up to tn. To do the computations exactly as before, we modify a bit, and we get the Poisson of parameter t. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is very, uh, very interesting. Uh, and uh, as a comment, uh, well, all this was a bit for fun. I mean, it's an introduction, so we'll see later extensions, the reflection group settings, also in interpretations of this in advanced representation theory context. So there's a lot and a lot of things that can be said about this. Uh, these computations that we did for fun today. I mean, it's uh, it's really a lot of interesting representations here behind. And uh, actually the representations here of the symmetric group is uh, is very complicated business. There's still research on that. I mean, young tableau, things like that, uh, little group, which have some coefficients. So all this, it's, uh, it's very complicated. It's still now in the 21st century, there's, uh, there's work on that, especially when one goes to infinity. I mean, it's, it's really very difficult questions here, interesting what we did is an interaction to this. So next time we'll, uh, we'll keep on doing these things for, uh, for reflection groups, and then we'll go to compact groups and uh, general representation theory. So, see you soon.